2020 may be the year of the RV, but manufacturers are not resting on their laurels. We talk with RV businesses, Rick Kessler, about the top RVs to watch out for in 2021. This is the RV Miles Podcast. The RV Miles Podcast is sponsored by L.L. Bean, your source for warm, cozy styles this fall. For 108 years, L.L. Bean has staked their reputation on making comfortable clothing and gear to help you enjoy the healthy benefits of being outside. From legendary main made boots to layers that are just the right weight to flannel shirts that out cozy all others. Find joy in the tried and true. Visit LLBean.com to find a store or shop now. LL Bean, be an outsider. Welcome to episode, what, what is it? Episode 166 of the RV Miles podcast. I'm Jason. Who's the one doped up on medication today? <laughs> and I'm Abby. And we are two full-time travelers who, along with our boys, Jack, Ethan, and Henry, are crisscrossing North America on one epic road trip. Each week, we talk all things RV and outdoors, from travel destinations to gear, industry news, our national parks, and a whole lot more. <laughs> I'm a little giddy right now. You I don't, are. I don't know what's going on with me. Hey, but I'm excited about this show. It's going to be a great show. We have Rick Kessler, our friend from RV Business. RV Business Magazine is the publication for the industry, and then there's also RVBusiness.com, which we write for from time to time. That covers all sorts of uh, news and press releases, upcoming events, all sorts of stuff. Boy, you and Rick just <laughs> chatted for. Ever. We did. Okay. And I, I thought it was going to be the entire podcast. I thought, well, Jason's doing me a favor. I have the week <laughs> off. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> so the, the the middle segment of the show is going to be uh, myself with, with Rick Kessler yes. to talk about their list of the 2021 best RVs, the ones that you should be looking out for next year because there are some really cool things that are coming down the road for sure. Yeah, and if you're wondering, it's that time of year again when Abby turns into the Kathleen Turner of <laughs> podcasting. <laughs> Abby's, a, Abby's a little under the weather right now. I am a little under the weather. I'm fighting a sinus <laughs> infection, and as it always happens, it moves into my voice, <laughs> and I start using my lower register and trying to talk to the kids in a menacing, but like calm like you better not do that because <laughs> i can't i can't, yell. can't get loud yeah they get really excited this time of year because my voice goes away <laughs> so that's uh, where yeah. that's where we're at i'm i'm going to limit as much as i can talking which is very difficult hey i like cooking with cast iron don't you oh i do too <laughs> and what i like even more about it is when i get a good detailed like breakdown list on how to clean those things yeah. up because they are sometimes really challenging to clean and someone finally figured it out yeah here's a recipe for cleaning a cast iron yeah, skillet this is a great one rub the still warm interior with paper towels you know while it's yeah. while it's still warm just off the stove you want to clean it out with some paper towels great advice scrub with a non-abrasive scrub pad yes you yell at me if i even look at the scrub pad mm. Answer the Skillet's Riddles 3. You know, that one always gets me. Because I usually can get the first two, but the third one always trips me up. Heat over medium-low heat, and then bathe the Skillet in the light of the blood moon and recite the ancient words. Do you know what those ancient words are? Is this why we can't ever the, keep they a cast iron? They don't list the ancient words. They I, don't. That's going to that's gonna be a problem. And then you rub it with olive oil. Fabulous. I'll, I don't. I can't, dis I can't agree with that. Olive oil? Mm -mm. That imparts too much flavor. <laughs> I think we've been doing it wrong for so long <laughs> because we don't know the ancient words. So hey. that's why we don't own a cast iron currently. <laughs> we don't know the ancient words. We actually don't carry cast iron anymore no. because we have our made-in carbon steel skillet, which right, I really like. It doesn't require our firstborn <laughs> no, in but order to you, keep it looking good. <laughs> you do have to season it and, uh, and clean it properly. But, you know, people uh, really um, get up in arms over cleaning cast iron and how you should do it and all that. But you know what? Even Lodge says that you can use soap in cast iron as long as you don't sit it and soak it in soapy mm -hmm. water. That's the problem. If the cleaning regimen that you use 
takes off the seasoning, it's not seasoned properly. You should start over. That's yep. the real problem. Yes. Yeah, so this great recipe, we recommend that you keep it somewhere safe or just go over to the RV Miles Facebook group to find it. Our friend Carrie shared it in the group the other day, and <laughs> it gave us all a very good laugh. And that is our weekly ask. We, we've been asking you every week to do you know, something to support us if you want to. We've just been trying to give you ideas. A lot of people want to support us in different ways. Uh, and you absolutely do not have to do any of these things. And it's totally fine. Yeah, we're cool. You can just listen. We're cool. But if you want something you can do to support us, go join the RV Miles Facebook group. That's our weekly ask this week because that's a place where people are nice to each other. And we love it. <laughs> but if you're not a nice person, don't come join the group. Yeah, listen, I had to boot mm -mm. two of you this week because <laughs> we don't do that there. We don't do not nice in the RV Miles Facebook group. So it's a lovely group. It's nice and small, about 5,000 members. We love it that way. It's been really fun to interact and get to know those of you on the other side of this audio podcast or on the other side of this video recording that you're watching on YouTube. It's a great way for us to get to know you and we hope a good way for you to get to know us a little bit better as well. So please go over. You just uh, go to facebook.com slash groups slash RV Miles group or search RV Miles group when you get on Facebook and you'll find us and you'll find more great tips for keeping your cast iron clean. And something recently came up in the group that I wanted to talk about. Jude asked about the difference between four season and three season RVs. Do they really need a four season unit and, and what does that entail? The answer is whatever that manufacturer decides. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, whatever they tell you on the lot. <laughs> four season could mean absolutely anything. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's a package. Sometimes it's an added package on an RV that is sort of like upgraded. Like they've put tank heaters on. Maybe they've put double pane windows on. Sometimes a four season RV is one that is truly uh, extra insulated. Uh, and generally extra insulated also means built better because they have to make that wall thicker, which means they make the structure bigger, and it's just a better built RV. Does that mean they can't use those staples? <laughs> well, they still, they're still going to use those staples well, that keep popping out of you our know, walls I everywhere. Love, I do love uh, those staples. But look, some RVs are not sold as four season. They don't use that as a marketing term, but they're still great in four season. And some are sold as four season and aren't great. Really what it comes down to is looking at how they insulate it, how it's built, how it's put together, um, you know, and what things they offer. Like an enclosed underbelly is one thing. Sometimes enclosed underbelly means a sheet of cheap corrugated plastic like we have underneath yeah. our belly. Yeah, I'd like to talk to someone that calls that enclosed. <laughs> Sometimes in it is truly well enclosed and heated. So all of your pipes will remain unfrozen throughout the winter as long as you're using your heat. So it could mean, it could mean those double pane windows. It could mean a heck of a lot of different things. So it's a marketing term. And sometimes it won't be four seasons. Sometimes it'll be Arctic package and, uh, you know, all, all sorts of different terms that they can use to make it sound like, oh, you're going to be warm in the winter. And to jack your price up. But um, but it, it is, you know, a, if you buy an RV that is better built to handle the winter, even if you don't plan on winter camping, it's going to save you energy in the fall season mm -hmm. for sure, because you'll use less heat and you'll use less propane and the electricity that goes with it. But also a, a better insulated RV does a heck of a lot better in the summer, keeping your air conditioning in and keeping the heat out as well. So it's not just about the winter, mm -hmm. you know, it, it can be a, really a nice thing in the summer to have a well insulated RV. So I wish there was a better answer to that question, but as is everything in, in, in RVs and automotive and it's all marketing and you have to read between the lines and really find out how it's made. So I had a, I was having a great conversation today um, with somebody in, in the industry talking about rallies at, at campgrounds rallies. You know, we've, we've been to a, couple of them we've been that we've had more canceled on us than than we've actually <laughs> yeah. been to <laughs> yeah 2020 was really supposed to be the year of the rally for us <laughs> and that just absolutely got 
thrown off the table. In fact, the whole 2020 table just got flipped over. But a lot of people have talked to us in the past about having some sort of RV miles get together. And so we're, we've are we been doing this question of the week thing where we ask you a question and you can go answer it in the comments over on YouTube, whether you're listening on YouTube or not. Uh, or you can go answer in the RV Miles Facebook group yeah. as well. But we want to know if we held a rally sometime in the future, not a big thing, you know, a get together yeah, like, of RV Miles listeners. If we all got together to hang out, yeah. I would rather say let's go hang out. Let's have a hangout. Rather than a rally. We'd reserve a, a, you know, a block of campsites in a campground somewhere, or maybe it would be a boondocking event. I don't know. Well, who knows? We won't know until about 24 <laughs> hours before it starts. So, if, <laughs> if we did such a thing, and, you know, forget about what area it is and would you be available, but uh, let us know if you'd be interested in attending something like that. Mm -hmm. We'd really like to sort of gauge interest because it's something we're thinking about doing because we really do love meeting listeners and uh, we do love hearing listeners tales from the road and it's always a great time and once this COVID thing blows over we would really like to spend more time with more people yeah <laughs> yeah we're getting really tired of each other <laughs> <laughs> no comment uh so uh, time to go to break <laughs> so yeah I'm gonna pose that question though over in the RV Miles Facebook group. So there will be a dedicated spot that you could come over and answer it. Or like Jason said, just answer it in the comments on the YouTube channel as well. But it would be really great to hear from everybody and figure out. I'm hoping by fall 2021, gosh, I can't even believe I'm saying that, that maybe we could actually begin to entertain something like I this for really 20. Hope so. I mean, it's going to take some time to plan it. And, you know, <laughs> we're so good at planning out long term. <laughs> Let's be honest. This will be like, hey, hey, guys, uh, we're up here. Do you want to join us? Right. I'm about to drop my GPS coordinates here. You guys want to come on over? <laughs> Let's take a break. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fall is here, so it's time to start thinking about prepping for the winter off season. Whether you own an RV, travel trailer, or camper, EmpireCovers.com is here to help protect all your vehicles against Mother Nature. EmpireCovers.com offers high quality, affordable covers that are engineered to protect. Every cover comes with a free multi-year warranty to guarantee that it remains durable over time. RV Miles listeners can receive free shipping plus an extra 15% off their entire order. Visit EmpireCovers.com slash RV Miles or use promo code RV Miles at checkout. EmpireCovers.com. Protect what you love. It is time for the answer to last week's brain teaser, which went like this. Through the day, they toiled away. At night, their plight was in disarray. A woman entered the picture and the changes came. Their lives would never be the same. Then the evil showed up and almost sent her to heaven. Many can name some, but can you name all of this fearless seven? I don't have the voice today to do my Snow White impersonation. Like, it's just not happening. But here's the thing. You can't but answer the seven dwarfs. That's not the correct answer. The you correct name You names. have to name them. Yeah. I don't know that I could have named them Hold without on. this in front of me. I'm not looking. Okay. Doc, okay. happy, yeah. sleepy. Grumpy, sneezy, uh -huh. bashful. Oh, and dog oh, happy, and oh come on! There, the people that are listening to this podcast right are now screaming are at shouting me. They're right screaming now at me because it's the most popular dwarf. Uh, dopey. Yes. I, <laughs> well, that's what I am right now. So. <laughs> I'm. I'm actually impressed that you got bashful. I think that's the one that's really hard to oh, remember. Oh, he's my favorite. He's my very, very favorite. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we. Uh, I'm really excited about this show today because we have Rick Kessler on, and Rick took the time to sit down with us and talk about the list of the top RVs for 2021 from RV Business Magazine and RVBusiness.com. They do this every year, and even though this year it was a little different, uh, it's really exciting to see what some of the new stuff is coming down the pipeline. So here's my interview with Rick Kessler, executive editor of RV Business. RV Business and RVBusiness.com are some great places to go to get insider information about the RV industry. If you're interested in geeking out on that stuff, 
but you can also get some real good consumer information as well. And every year they put together their top picks for the best RVs of the year. And this year, even though it's been a little different because of the coronavirus, they've done the same. Today, I have Rick Kessler, executive editor of RV Business on the show. Rick, how does this list come together? I know this year is a little bit different than in the past, but how does it normally come together? And, and what do you have to change to make this happen in the year of the coronavirus? Hey, thanks very much. Uh, long time listener, first time caller. <laughs> well, the RV Business Magazine, we've been doing this um, well before my time. I've been with them six years. Um, and RVBusiness.com, well, ever since we, we started the website, we would also uh, post that announcement there as well. How does this list come together? I know this year is a little bit different than in the past, but how does it normally come together? And, and what do you have to change to make this happen in the year of the coronavirus? When we put together the RV of the year list every year, first of all, it's an imperfect science. It's basically our opinion. There's the, the criteria is innovation and engineering and design and, and things that we haven't seen before, things that were executed extremely well, if not flawlessly. But again, it's really just the opinion of the people in the room after quite a bit of deliberation. Prior to this year, and I'll get to this year's <laughs> formula in a minute, but prior to this year, we would have the luxury of uh, attending the largest RV show in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the Hershey show, and the uh, Elkhart RV open house. Uh, that's usually a week or two after the Hershey show. And reason why we would attend those shows is that's where the manufacturers would introduce all of their new model year RVs towables and motorized. So we would team up with the editorial staffs from Trailer Life and Motorhome magazines. So between all of us, there's probably a good eight, 10, maybe even 12 people, depending on how many we've got coming uh, that particular year. So we would canvas each show. We would inspect well over 100 units. And it was, it was a really nice setup because we would start out and we would, everybody would see everything. Then we'd come back and compare notes and say, okay, we, this one's probably a contender. So then everybody would make sure that they would see those contenders so that we could all deliberate and usually it's argue with firsthand knowledge of what we were looking at or what we had looked at. That was then, this is now. <laughs> and now is because of COVID, the Hershey show was canceled and the Elkhart RV open house was canceled. So we weren't able to see nearly as many RVs as we normally would have, number one. And number two, we didn't have the opportunity to collaborate with the editorial staffs from Trailer Life and Motorhome. So because of that, we decided as a staff to not select an overall winner but instead select what we thought were the top 10. And then after the top 10, we wanted to select what we call the top debuts. And then even beyond that, we wanted to single out some others that we're calling must see RVs. We ended up with 68 total 2021 RVs that we thought ought to be recognized. And we really, we could have gone even further than that because um, pleased to say there was, there was some really nice stuff that we were able to to get a look or at. Or are they too busy to innovate with all the RVs that they have to build that are already ordered? Good question. Uh, coming into this year, I was really curious if we were going to see some some innovation, if we were going to see something new. We normally see something new and some something innovative every year, but because of the COVID, I didn't know if we'd see that this year. You know, they started out the year, the dealers were reporting really good sales and a lot of attendance at all the consumer RV shows. Then, as you know, COVID hit, manufacturing shut down completely for a good month and a half or so. And then after that month and a half, somebody flipped a switch somewhere and that garden hose became a fire hose. And even that fire hose wasn't enough for all the demand and they still haven't caught up. There's talk that uh, their backlogs are well into next year six, seven, eight months at, at minimum for some of them. So I was curious if we were going to see any kind of innovation. I was pleasantly surprised with the amount of innovation, and that is a big reason why we sought to recognize as many units as we did. 
what are some of the trends you saw this year? One of the trends is actually coming out of COVID and the, the manufacturers are recognizing that these RVs, the ones that we use are now our offices and our classrooms. So they have developed flex space, if you want to call it that, that can be used either as, as a, a, a den for, for your office or for uh, classroom activities with you know two or three or several kids learning remotely. Not a lot. I think some of them are still just really getting on to or picking up on that trend. Um, but that's definitely something I, you're going to see more of. And, and with that, of course, is the, the connectivity. They're all, they're all providing the, the connectivity solutions that everyone needs now. I'm really excited about more RVs having that flexibility of spaces that actually work, not just a dinette that converts into a bed that nobody uses, but being able to quickly and easily be able to move from one thing to, to another. You know, we've got office work that we have to do. We've got homeschooling and it's a challenge. Venture RV, it's a sport trek touring. They're one of our must see RVs. They had a prototype of just such a unit it wasn't completely done. So um, we, we saw the concept more than we saw the finished product, right? Uh, it's, first of all, it's 37 feet long travel trailer. So it's, it's rather long, but the rear end of it is, you'll see these a lot of times in, in fifth wheels, but it, essentially it's, you most think of it as a quad bunk in the rear end, but they've come up with this new way of, of taking up and, and setting down the, the bunks so that they can, can easily convert into, uh, you know, desk height um, um, shelves or, or uh, tables um, so that you can set up your laptops and everything like that. Pretty cool idea. I, I'd, lo I'd love to see the, the finished product as uh, Dave Boggs, the designer last year, he, he came up with the RV of the year. So he, he's very capable of some, some beautiful stuff. So we can't go through everything, but what are some of the RVs on the list that stood out to you above and beyond the ones that are in the top 10? What are the ones that uh, really shined and what are your favorites? Well, probably the ones in our top 10, I guess, would be the ones that most excited me. Um, not to say that the other ones didn't have their moments. They certainly do. Uh, there's quite a few of them that could have made the top 10 any other year. Well, let's just start alphabetically because that way I won't get in any trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alliance RV, they um, brand new startup company. The uh, brothers who started it, Coley and Ryan Brady, they came from a, another manufacturer, Heartland, and started up their own business. And the first thing they came out with was uh, a high-end fifth wheel called the Paradigm. It's a really attractive RV, but probably what excites me about that most is they put their money in the things that you don't see. And by that, I mean, running gear and suspension is, is uh, heavy duty. A lot of times people will buy their first RV and then realize that they should have thought of that. And they usually will think of that for their second RV. The other thing that's kind of nice about it is they took a lot of the, their, or made a lot of their choices, the, their build choices, using feedback from the, what they call them allies, but it's basically the people who, follow them on Facebook and they'll poll the reader or the viewers with, with a question and, and come up with, with a, a choice based on, on their answers. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, you always talk about manufacturers never listen to the consumers. Well, here they're not only listening, they're, they're using that input. Next one, the Fleetwood Discovery 36 HQ. That's a very nice class A motorhome from Fleetwood. Um, Fleet, if that Fleetwood Discovery name sounds familiar, that's because it's been around for 25 years, which is almost unheard of in this industry to have a, a brand last that long. Um, the 25th anniversary package is, is one reason why this is on the list because it's, you know, it's got the nice bells and whistles that you would expect from a high-end motorhome. But uh, the other reason it's on this list is for the first time I could, first time I can think of, it's got an island kitchen, and you see those all the time in fifth wheels. But you come, you don't really see them too often, if at all, in a motorhome, and that's because it's just with the slides in, you just can't really use the space at all. What they've been able to do with this though is they came out with a little bit of a, and I'm going to try to describe it. It's not very, 
I'll do the best I can. But the, the dining room table is attached to the wall. And this is, this is next to the, the island area, okay? So you can use it as a table with four chairs around it. When you don't want to use it as a table with four chairs, it basically rotates and then slides up against the wall. So it's now a buffet. It, it can be a desk, uh, any number of uses, right? But um, just a really well executed and well thought out um, engineering solution to be able to fit in an island kitchen. Uh, the River Ranch, have you heard the River Ranch yet? Yes, I, that was one of my fresh tanks recently. I'm really excited about the River Ranch. I got a chance to see that and, and uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty incredible fifth wheel. The Palomino brand, which is by Forest River, but the River Ranch is a fifth wheel, but the entire lower level is what we call basement storage. And that means the upper level is basically a travel trailer, which is kind of nice if you, if you don't want to have to go up and down the fifth wheel steps uh, once you're inside the unit all day long. It's all flat floor that way. The basement storage is something like, boy, I'm gonna get the numbers wrong here, but I believe it's not quite 500 cubic feet of, of basement storage. So if you're a full-time RVer, or certainly one with extended stay tendencies, you, you can't get more storage than that. It's, it's pretty incredible. And then, and then just as far as a fit and finish too, they really did a good job. They, they put out some, a few prototypes and sent it off to the Navistar track tack, uh, tr test track to, to run it through its paces and came back and realized they had to make some things better. And they did, they did. So it's, it's not just a quick one-off that they'll flood the market and then be done with it. This is something that definitely is gonna last and should appeal to a lot of, lot of full-timers, I would think. What else you got for us? There's two others on our list that are, are really in the same category. Um, one is the Ibex. It's a travel trailer by Forest River. Um, the same people who designed the Ibex are the ones who did the No Boundaries a couple years ago and the R-Pod, um, also the Surveyor. But also the other one with that is the, the Jayco J-Feather Micro. And both of them, I put them in a category called Adventure Trailer. Um, I made up that category, I guess, but these are small units, single axle, some are double axle, so they can go just about anywhere. They're both off-road. Uh, they both have a, a solar um, with inverter. Um, the Jayco includes a, an exclusive Blackstone griddle, which is, uh, I guess that's this year's, oh, what's the, the Instant Pot, right? Yeah, I think it was last year's. I think, they, I think they're behind the times now. I think they need to move yeah, on to the go. air fryer. <laughs> Next one up would be, and this one's pretty cool. This, this would be, uh, I don't know if it's a family so much as a really cool couples coach, but Grand Design Solitude 346 FLS. And FLS is front living. So that's a raised front living because it's on a fifth wheel. It also has the bedroom in the rear and it's, that's raised as well. It's, it's, it's a common floor plan, but what makes this unique is it's less than 38 feet long. And honest to goodness, I was inside there and for the life of me, it looks and feels much longer than 38 feet. But it's 37 feet, 11 inches from, from a fifth wheel hitch all the way back to the rear bumper. Uh, Keystone Arcadia. Pub public hasn't seen that one yet and they're probably not going to see it until the, the Tampa RV show in January because they're still working on the prototypes. We were given a sneak preview, and it, even then, that is, I think, a third or fourth prototype they were working on, and it, that was, wasn't quite done yet. It was done enough that we got the gist of it. But that's a new uh, fifth wheel and travel trailer brand from Keystone that's just loaded with innovation. Probably shouldn't talk more about it because we were sworn to secrecy, but I, I really encourage people to keep an eye out for the Keystone Arcadia. Canyon Star from Numar. Another class A, big thing, big reason why this is on the list is it is a front engine diesel class A motorhome. It's a brand new, it's not the old front engine diesel, which people called Fred from back few years back. Uh, this one is all new configuration and all new 
uh, engineering from, from uh, Freightliner and Cummins. Um, and the last one is the Winnebago hike. And uh, I guess you could put hike in the same category as the Ibex and Micro from Jayco. It's definitely adventure ready. It's uh, one and two axle units. People are gonna recognize that pretty quickly because on the outside it has that patented exoskeleton, which is pretty cool. At first I thought it was a gimmick, but after getting the definite explanation of, of how it works and why it's there, I think it's I think it's good. It's 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 basically a gear rack on steroids. It's kind of like one of those little mini adventure tent trailers that you can just strap a whole bunch of stuff onto, but a heck of a lot bigger. Rick, thanks so much for sharing this with us. I think it's fantastic. I'm really excited about sharing some of these uh, new RVs with our viewers and listeners. You know, a lot of people are opining right now <laughs> with all the backlogs and the the ramped up production and um, the the orders going on for months and months about what next year will be like for the RV industry. If you could look into your crystal ball, what do you see? I know that's not easy to do, but what do you, what's your gut feeling? That, uh, that's a million dollar question. You know, everyone wants to know what's going to happen next year. All of the so-called experts are predicting extremely strong sales to continue. A lot of that is based on the, the backlogs that are already in hand. Um, and a lot of that too is we really still don't know what the pandemic fallout what that will be and when that will be so that this this um this need to escape to the outdoors is likely to continue um which for all of us our veers who are scrambling to find available campsites that makes it a little difficult um we only got out twice this year just because that's all we could find i'm sure if we went to to uh well, I don't, I'll say it anyway. If, if a campsite, if a campground has vacancies, there might be a reason why. <laughs> <laughs> we know this to be true. Rick Gessler, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate you running through these units with us and we'll link to RV businesses, full list of the top RVs for 2021. There are a heck of a lot of them for people to look at uh, in the show notes and in the description on YouTube. And then we're going to be putting together another video uh, that's really going to run through them all on, on YouTube as well. Uh, but again, thanks so much. And I know RV Business Magazine, you're going to be putting them out in a big spread there. So people should be checking for that. And you can find that both in PDF form and in magazine form if you want to subscribe to RV Business. Rick Kessler, thanks so much for being on the RV Miles podcast. Thanks very much, Jason. Appreciate having you on. No, wait. Let me do that again. <laughs> when it comes to RV travel, weather safety is a top priority, which is why the Highway Weather app provides weather forecasts for road trips along every point of your route, adjusted to your time of travel. You can compare forecasts, get recommendations for the best time to head out, get severe weather alerts, add rest stops to long trips, and more. Did I mention all of that's included free in the app? For subscribers, there's a hands-free background feature to automatically alert you to upcoming bad weather. To download the app, visit highwayweather.io today or look for it in your iOS or Android app store. It is now time, the time at which we check the level of our tanks. Abby, what is in your black tank this week. I love this thing. With this thing you this do. This is the level. What? Up and down, up and down. If you listen if you're not watching, if you're listening, she <laughs> raises her hand up and down every time I say this. Like Yeah, like the level goes up and down, just like the very inconsistent levels of our black tank and gray tanks over there. It's great because like, I don't have to have never, a graphic. You just No, you, you don't. You I do, do it for you. I save you thirty seconds worth of work. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how long it takes. Me. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Does it just take 30 seconds to find a graph? Abby, Plop what? it onto a video. <laughs> oh. I don't understand. What's going on? <laughs> what is in your black tank this week? So my black tank goes to not the story, but the people who decided to weigh in on the story. Um, on October 9th in Yellowstone Park, a small child, a three-year-old, ran off trail and was injured in a thermal basin. 
and was burned enough that the child needed to go to um, a nearby hospital, needed to be life flighted out, and needed to go to a hospital. So this was shared in various, you know, groups like it does, because we're going to share this and we're all going to talk about it. And I was beyond appalled by the things that people were saying about this child, about this family, the assumptions that were being made about the parents being bad, that they were too busy taking selfies. I don't think at any time is a child an a-hole, especially a three-year-old. Three-year-old. But, you know, these were the comments that we were seeing, and it just, it speaks to such a bigger narrative that there's no sympathy left for one another. Like, there's no empathy left. It's an automatic assumption that parents of a particular generation are just awful, that they don't know how to take care of their kids, that they're so busy taking selfies and talking on their phones or looking on Facebook or doing all of these random things. And I'm telling you, that is not what we are doing. Accidents happen. Oh my you know, gosh. Everybody. I just, the park did not the, release any information whatsoever except exactly what happened. So you, anything else you drop in there is just you deciding that that's how that narrative played out. And it's destructive and it's gross. I, I the, uh, the, the all of the uh, children should be on leashes. Oh stuff. my gosh. All of the oh my children gosh. shouldn't be allowed in Yellowstone stuff. There's so much that goes to this. And, you know, just having left Yellowstone and knowing what those boardwalks are like and knowing what the area is like and knowing what it's like to have a three-year-old, a three-year-old, again, that we don't know anything about this three-year-old. We make every assumption that they're one thing or the other, but we don't know what this family faces raising this three-year-old. It could just be a really impulsive little one who just sees something cool and runs towards it. They could it. be perfect parents. Oh, gosh. And it could be There's the no such sweetest thing as a little parent. child. <laughs> and they just had We're... an accident. It was just really disheartening. Well, it, I... I think there's something different about going after an adult, a grown-up, right? Like two grown-ups, you yeah. know, going after each other. But when you go after kids, and we've had this happen to us personally, we've seen it happen in the virtual world. When you go after people who aren't able to defend themselves. I could go on about this forever and we'll move on. But the reality is, is that there was someone who was injured. I cannot imagine what it must be like to watch someone you love, someone little, be hurt so much that you then have to put them in a helicopter and you have to take them. Those parents are already beating themselves up enough without the internet. Yeah helping them out like, while I the kids in the hospital it. I, it, it's we forget social it media is, people just forget that this stuff happens to real people this thing these yeah. things we read about happen to real people we don't respond in a way that we think they'll never see it but they do they might not see your comment there but they're gonna see some people well, that comments. energy they're just gonna gets get put it. out you know those negative feelings they just get put out into the world they get put out into space and I really do believe that, you know, what you put out is what you get back. There's a part of me so deep down inside that the minute I read that, I just, I couldn't almost, you know, process what it must have felt like for that child when they fell. That's where my heart goes. My heart doesn't go like, well, you need that kid on a leash and what an a-hole that kid is and what awful parents you are. My heart goes to that spot where it's just almost too much to process. So I'm black tanking. People who just, you know, hide behind their screens and sideline parent and sideline judge all of us. And we need a whole lot less of that going into 2021 because 2020 has been tough. And we've we've been tough on ourselves without everyone else piling it up on top of us. So a little a little bit more love and a whole heck of a lot less keyboard warriors, in my opinion. What is your fresh tank? I saved my whole voice for my black tank. Okay. <laughs> so my fresh tank this week is I am recommending a book. It is by an author. This is going to be her fourth book in the series. It just recently came out. It's by Sophie Hanna, writing with the uh, permission of the Agatha Christie estate. So she's started rewriting the Hercule Poirot 
mysteries. I've talked about these books in the past. So her fourth book just came out. It's called The Killings at Kingfisher Hill. If you're looking for a great mystery that's really easy to digest, that's going to keep you hanging on till the very last minute, I encourage you to go read this book. I encourage you to go back and start with book one. If you haven't already read one, two, and three, I love these books. So again, it's Sophie Hanna. The book is called The Killings at Kingfisher Hill. It's a real easy read. Absolutely recommend it. All right. All right. What is your black tank this week? My black tank. Now, this could go either way. Uh, it's a fresh tank for some people, but it's a black <laughs> tank for Ford. Oh. Um, <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you know, if you follow trucks a lot, and you, a lot of trucks are being sold. A if lot you of trucks follow are being trucks. sold right now. This coming and, from the man well, who watches nothing but truck videos. Oh, wow, I watch more than that. I watch videos about microphones. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You split your time between microphone <laughs> videos and truck videos. 90% of RVers own trucks. So, yes. you know, there's a lot of you out there, I'm sure, listening that own trucks. And if you own the Ford 6.0 diesel engine, or if you've heard about it, the, the 6.0 was sold um, mostly in the 2000s, and it had lots of problems. And uh, suffice it to say, problems bad enough that uh, there was a big class action lawsuit. What just happened this week is that somebody who did not participate in the class action lawsuit because they said, I'm going to go sue them myself. I'm not, being, I'm not getting no $200 from a class action lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sue Ford myself. Uh, in, in, in an appeals court, it, it was found that Ford committed fraud by selling defective super duty trucks that they knew, uh, were defective and that they were having issues with. This guy was awarded $726,000. Woo! He's going to go ahead and brush that guy's shoulder off. <laughs> go get right 10 there. new trucks for that. He's <laughs> more like five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's a little, hey, there's a little bit know. of back and forth on whether that those damages are are a little too high, but uh, they're they're working that out in the court. So that's my big thing about trucks. Some people have real brand affinities. Um, to me, it really comes down to that engine, and if especially if you're buying a diesel engine that's in the ten thousand dollar price range just for the engine, and it's going to have some issues. Boy, uh, and that can happen in any line. So when you said. Black tank for Ford, fresh tank for others. You really meant Chevy and Dodge, right? I know. Like... I met the person that won the lawsuit. <laughs> Chevy and Dodge now, are like, oh, now, yeah. Now, rest assured that the 6.0 uh, Ford engine is no longer sold. And the the latest generation uh, Ford Power Stroke diesel engine is considered to be, by many, the best diesel engine available in a heavy duty truck right now. And, uh, and they're supposed to be rock solid and they are incredibly powerful, over a thousand foot pounds of torque. But um, yeah, I mean, this it, gives it, you it, a little bit of pause, I should hope, well, though, about yeah. the ethics behind Ford and what they're willing to sell and how much they know about it. I, that, yeah. you know. Well, I also think it's just when, when people ask about different brands of trucks, I my response is always, what year, what engine, you know, it makes right. a huge difference. What, what transmission, um, it really makes a, a big difference. Because trucks stay on the road. Trucks are sold. Long, I mean, there are many 2006 trucks out there oh, yeah. for purchase. Yeah. So this engine is still out there. It's still out on the road. You could still potentially find yourself possibly pur well, it, purchasing one. And that's what's happening a lot right now is people are looking at trucks to buy RVs with, and they're seeing that the 6.0 is available, and they're, they're wondering why the price is so low all the time. Didn't we look at like a 2008 mm -hmm. something, mm -hmm. and we got into this and thing, like, mm -mm. and we were like... <laughs> Mm -mm. This was a, this was, this the guy cloth. had this, it was a coal rolling diesel <laughs> with two giant uh, exhaust pipes oh, and, uh, and this, uh, this guy had, had really rigged this thing up to be. And it had cloth interior that was torn and they were still trying to sell that thing to us for almost $20,000. Yeah. And we were like. I'm not buying no mm -mm. ripped seats for $20,000. Yeah. Mm -mm. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jay, what is your fresh tank this week? Uh, my fresh tank is the state of Washington, Washington State Parks. You know, we talked last week about how 
we wish that more public campgrounds would be open later into the season. And uh, the state of Washington is a colder weather state, not the coldest, but it's the it's a colder weather state, and they do this. They regularly open campgrounds year round, and uh, they sort of evaluate on a year to year basis how many campgrounds will be open for that year. But they have a hundred state parks are going to remain open all year long. Those aren't those don't all have campgrounds, but about one, two, three. That's a decent number you're looking at right there. There's probably about twelve. 18 campgrounds or 18. in in the state of Washington are open all year round. And it would be really great if more states would do stuff like that. That is super cool. Maybe we'll find ourselves in Washington sometime next year. All right, let's wrap this episode up with a brain teaser. Let's do it. The following sports are listed in an order. What is it? Soccer, hockey, American football, baseball, bowling, and golf. We'll have the answer to that next week and a whole lot more on the RV Miles podcast. Yes, we will. And hey, if you are enjoying RV Miles, please go over to Apple Podcasts and leave us a five-star review. We'd also like to remind you RV Miles is all across social media, so please come and join us. And if you are shopping Amazon this holiday season, we want to shop with you. Please use amazon.rvmiles.com. Using that link gives us a little bit of a kickback at no extra cost to you. You are supporting free content content and independent RV journalism. Thank you so much for listening this week to the show. We look forward to seeing you next week, but until then, keep logging those RV miles. Bye everybody.